All right, let's get this party started. Hello everyone, hope you're well. Good to see you all again. I think there are only like a couple people missing, but maybe they'll trickle in afterwards. Um, yeah, so hopefully the first quiz was okay. It seems like some of you ran out of time with uploading your answers. Um, that's definitely something we need to work on uh, for next time. Right now, you can just email me. Email me like in the next couple minutes. Just send your scans to the email that's on the syllabus. And we'll stop there. Hopefully that wasn't that bad. Uh, a lot of the problems were just you checking whether something was true or false, essentially, um, after seeing the form. If you knew the forms very well, and you were, you had the algebra skills to separate uh, differential equations. Uh, most of it shouldn't be that bad. There weren't a lot of problems on uh, first order linear differential equations, which is what we covered last time. I think I asked some general questions about it, um, but there was, was no specific example where you really had to work one through. There was a population example, but that was more of a simple one. And, uh, but there will be, uh, we will have cases in the future where we're going to use that, so I wasn't too worried about this quiz. Um, but yeah, you will have more quizzes on first order linear stuff because we're going to we're going to be we'll probably be using them today. So there are two main things I wanted to cover today. Uh, we want to talk about uh, homogeneous first order differential equations, and then we want to go into, if possible. Uh, just set up uh, some applications for first order linear differential equations. So you were supposed to upload the scans to in Gradescope where the quiz is. So the last question is, um, so the last question asks you to upload your answers. Now you didn't have to show your work for everything. So for the problems that ask you to identify things, you didn't have to show your work. You just had to select yes or no or impossible to tell. And, but for the few problems at the bottom uh, towards the end of the quiz that asked you to solve the differential equation and I gave you some examples, uh, you have to show your work for those. Um, this quiz was probably a little bit longer than a normal quiz would be. Um, I couldn't get to the but, yeah. bottom of the page. So I didn't see the Q23 here. So okay. I didn't upload my work. So okay. how, how's well, that in this that? in this point at this point, I would say just email me uh, your answer scans. Um, but in general, that would be the format. And I mentioned this in an email as well, that the last problem in the quiz will be a problem that asks you to upload all your solutions. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I just, so I just email you. Yes. All right, uh, let's actually begin with uh, the lesson of the day. And this is the lesson we did actually last week, um, but I guess we can just do a quick recap while we're here. Let's turn off the video and get this lesson started. So this is what we were doing last time. First order linear ODEs, that's a very specific thing. First order linear means it has this form right here. Um, this is called the standard form. So there was a question in the quiz where I asked you just to regurgitate the standard form. You had to write something like this down. Now, of course, if you wrote y prime instead of dy dx, it's fine. If you wrote in t's instead of x's, it's fine. Or, or if you didn't write down the x's or, or didn't identify the independent variable, I'd also accept that. So any of these uh, formats were fine for a first order linear. Now, these guys show up all around the place. And we are actually going to look at some applications two sections from now uh, for first order linear differential equations. So it's there, these guys are very important for us to know how to solve. The main way that we saw how to solve them was the method of integrating factors. It turns out for a, any first order linear differential equation, there is a function that we traditionally call mu that you can multiply the equation through by so that the left side will become the, uh, the expanded form of the product rule, which allows you to contract that into just one big derivative. And ultimately you can just integrate both sides at that point to find the answer, right? So this was the process 
very important process to know. Um, and I don't know, maybe at some point, maybe even on the next quiz, I might ask you about the process itself. So we did a bunch of examples where we just solved some first order linear differential equations, no context given, just doing some random problems. And that's where we ended. And here's where, so yeah, I mentioned here was a 10 minute quiz, but that's normally in class. And normally we've covered like twice the amount of classes that we would have covered in a single week in the regular semester. So your 10 minute quiz really uh, turned out into more of a 20 minute quiz this time around. But you guys, I think I gave you guys 30 minutes because I also wanted to add some time to um, for you guys to actually be able to upload stuff. Okay, uh, then oh, there's something else I wanna mention. Maybe I'll mention it on the other page. So uh, at this point, so this was something new. I heard about this yesterday, so now I'm telling you guys now, didn't have class yesterday, uh, but um, we are having official office hours uh, during the, summer. So normally that's not required, but uh, in light of everything, I think the math department asked us to hold official office hours. So the office hours normally was by appointment, uh, and but now it's going to be more of an official time. So I think Tuesdays and Thursdays, so the first day, the first class of the week and the day of the second class, the last class of the week, uh, and it's from 12 p.m to 1 p.m., so a little bit before class starts. So these are, are now the official office hours. Now, of course, uh, I, and I put this on the, I updated the class website with this information as well, um, but you should email me that you want to show up for office hours, and I will send you the Zoom link where you can actually meet with me. So I don't want to publish anything here because, you know, uh, Zoom bombing is a thing, and I don't want to give people uh, too much information. So if you want to meet with me during office hours during these times, I will be available. I will be at the computer and I will be looking out for people's emails. Of course, if you want to meet with me outside of these times, that's okay too. Just email me and we'll try to find a time where we both can actually, um, uh, we can both actually meet. So that's just uh, more general. So we now have uh, some official office hours. Okay. Uh, Right, so recordings of the previous class uh, can be found uh, on the, I have a YouTube playlist for this class. The, you can find that by going to the class website. There's a, a link to the playlist there and someone just posted a link to uh, the last lecture as well. But there's an entire playlist, uh, let's see. So instead of uh, just linking that one lecture, maybe I'll give you guys the playlist. And again, this it, you can find this this link on the class website as well. But uh, that's a link to the playlist for the class. So all the lectures you'll find at that link that I just posted in the chat. So, so far we have three lectures posted because we had three classes last week and this is going to be our fourth class. And these are now the official, uh, the official office hours. But of course, when you want to meet with me, uh, send me an email, I'll send you the Zoom link and we will meet up. Now, onto the main, uh, the main matter of today's class. It's one other class of differential equations. So this is another form that we need to have memorized. It is called the homogeneous first order differential equation. So these guys are not necessarily linear. However, you can identify when you're looking at one by this criteria here. Well, there's gonna be a more refined criteria because this is what defines a homogeneous of degree N, a general form, a general description, but we're going to look at degree zero only. Okay, so we say a function f of x, y, so this is a multivariable function. We say it's homogeneous of degree N if if you replace x with a constant times x and you replace all y's with a constant times y, you get k to the nth power times the original function. Okay, so this is called the homogeneous of degree n. That's just what it's called, it's a definition. Okay, so we say a first order ODE is homogeneous of degree n if it has this form. 
So it is the derivative, if the der dy dx can be expressed as a homogeneous function, we call that differential equation a homogeneous first order ODE, right? Now we will care about the ones that are of degree zero, as I mentioned here. So we are gonna care about when n equals zero, meaning that we're going to look at differential equations that have this form, dy dx equals some function f of some function of x and y, where if I replace all x's with a constant times x and I replace all y's with a constant times y, it makes no difference. It'll all simplify and give us back the original function. Okay. And it turns out that there is a useful property that we can take advantage of for these kinds of differential equations. If a function is homogeneous, then it turns out, and this is a theorem, I'm not going to prove it, but it is a useful fact. That then we can write this function as a, a function of the variable y divided by x, right? So it turns out whenever a function is homogeneous, you'll be able to actually rewrite it so that the variable, you can think of it as a function of the variable y divided by x. And I'll show you some examples of that later on. And this allows us to use a nice technique. This is a general technique, but we're going to look at uh, a specific example here called substitution which the idea is somewhat similar to substitution that you had from uh, integration back in Calc 2, but of course it's more general. The idea is we're gonna make a substitution in a differential equation that allows us to simplify that differentiation, differential equation in some way. Now, if our function can be written as a function of this variable, y over x, which will always happen when it's homogeneous, then we're able to do a substitution v equals y over x. So we're going to go in, we're going to replace y over x with v's everywhere, and we're going to get a new differential equation in terms of v's, where our v is like the independent variable. And then we're going to be able to solve that. And once the, we are looking at a homogeneous first order differential equation, it will be relatively easy for us to solve that, because it turns out if we are homogeneous, if we have a homogeneous differential, first order differential equation, and we do this substitution, v equals y over x, it will transform the equation that we're looking at to be separable, whether or not it was separable in the first place. And this also goes back to something else I mentioned last time, is that remember, there is some sort of hierarchy in our minds of what we would attempt first or second or third when we are faced with a random differential equation. So a separable differential equation, these are the guys that we always look for first, right? When something is separable, it's one of the easiest kind of differential equations for us to solve. So we always sort of try to get it to be, to figure out if something is separable first, and then we just use separation of variables to solve it. Now it turns out sometimes things are not separable, obviously. And if we're looking at a homogeneous differential, first order differential equation, and assuming it's not separable, and assuming it's not linear, so none of our techniques that we had before can work. However, we know that it's homogeneous, then we can use a substitution to transform it into a separable ODE. Of course, it will be in some other variable. Okay, so now let's talk about what this will actually result in. So we see something that is a homogeneous first order differential equation. We know that it can be written as a function of y over x. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a variable. Traditionally, we call it v. v equals y over x. What is the result of making that substitution? Well, if we have v equals y over x, then that means I can write y as v times x. And v here, I want you to think of as a function of x, right? So, and, and this is going to be something that's also common in differential equations, is us looking at a solution as a function times something else. We'll get to that when we talk about reduction of order and a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, try to follow the process at this point, okay? So thinking of my y as v times x, it means I can then derive a formula for dy dx. By the product rule, dy dx will be leave the x, differentiate the v, plus leave the v, differentiate the x. So I'll be able to replace the dy dx with x dv, uh, x dv dx plus v, right? So that's going to be something that you'd have to remember, and I'll, I'll, I'll summarize this as well. And essentially, here's what's going to happen. So this box kind of summarizes what this uh, process is going to look like, okay? So this box is very important. This is the box that you need to know, okay? So, uh, so this box here, boom, 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 boom. Remember, 
when it comes to differential equations and we're looking at these methods, what you want to pay attention to is the forms, what a differential equation will look like, and what method goes along with that form. So we're looking at homogeneous first order ODEs. We're looking at homogeneous first order ODEs of, uh, of degree zero. Okay. Um, and so in, in our class, it's always going to be assumed to be degree zero. All right, so suppose we have a differential equation that has this form. And we notice that f is homogeneous of degree zero, meaning if I replace all x's with a constant times x and I replace all y's with a constant times y, it just simplifies to the original function. Then we can do a substitution v equals y over x, and here's what's going to happen. Our dy dx is going to become this expression. We can get that by the product rule. Everywhere you see a y in the original function, it's going to become v. Everywhere you see an x in the original function, you can replace it with the number one, specifically the number one. I'll, I'll look, I will explain why this is the case um, later on. But eventually, you will, you'll just plug all these guys in and not worry about it. But I'm going to show you why these guys actually are, uh, why they become v and one, respectively. Now, once you substitute the above in the original ODE, it will result in a separable ODE. And then you're just going to solve that new ODE. After that, you're going to replace all your v's with y over x's, and so you can get your answers in terms of x's and y's. And that's essentially the process. That's kind of it. Um, very short process. You do these substitutions described by the first three bullet points here. You will get a separable differential equation. We know how to deal with those. You solve the differential equation, uh, do the back substitution, and move on with your life. Here is a caveat, though. Here's one thing that uh, tends to be true with these sorts of differential equations. The integral that you usually get is usually going to be messy, meaning it's going to be something where you're going to have to do like a partial fractions to figure out or some obscure substitution. So just be aware of that. I mentioned this last week that you guys really need to take, needed to take the weekend and brush up on your integration techniques because we are getting to the point where you're going to need the more sophisticated techniques to help you out. And this is the first topic where that is going to be true. The integral is just, just the nature of the beast. They tend to be on the more difficult side. So hopefully you guys brushed up on your integration. Explicit solutions also tend to be hard to find. So it's, it's going to be rare in general. You still try to get to it if you can, but it's going to be rare in general to solve for y equals a function of purely x, where the y is isolated on one side and everything is kind of neat and hunky-dory. A lot of times your solution is going to come into a form where your x's and y's are kind of mixed together. Okay, um, So that is the process. And that's, there's nothing else to say about this. This is just the technique for solving this differential equation. We are going to go through these examples to illustrate the, the equation. We are also going to go through a general substitution example, just for you to see the idea of substitution in a more general sense. And with my first equation, I'm going to do it a little bit more long-winded type, uh, so you can kind of see why these three bullet points are true. Um, so in the meantime, what I would like you guys to do, because we're going to do this all the time, is maybe like take a screenshot of this box here. Um, that's going to be something that you want to copy in your notes. You are going to want to copy on a separate formula sheet to have uh, with you at all times. But we're going to be using this process to solve these equations. And I don't want to have to scroll up and down all the time to talk about it. So I'll give you guys five seconds to take a screenshot of that with your phone or something, and then we can use it to go through the problem. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, all right. Let's move on. So maybe I can make these guys a little bigger. There we go. And let's start with example A. So let's move these guys out the way here and let's start with example A. So look at this example, okay? So I'm going to go through this example, going to go through it very slowly, very carefully. I'm going to explain uh, everything that you would think, everything that you would need to know. I'm also going to explain a little bit extra, like why these steps are the way they are. And then I will have you guys help me through the other uh, examples. Okay. So here's a differential equation. 
One thing is, you'll notice that it is not linear. You will also notice that it is not separable. So that's the first thing I would actually notice here. So first of all, you'd note this is not linear. It is also not separable. Now, of course, that takes a little bit of algebra skills to see. Basically, you want to see, can I actually multiply out, rearrange things, uh, simplify things that they look either linear or separable? You'd realize that if you actually attempted that, you cannot uh, uh, get that. But notice the following. If I look at f of x, y as this function, Note that if I were to find f of kx, ky, what would happen is I would plug in k times y everywhere I see y. I would plug in k times x everywhere I see x. Plug in k times x minus k times y. You'll notice here that your k is a common term in the top that you can factor out. And your k is a common term in the bottom that you can factor out. So at this point here, the k's would cancel. And you would end up with y minus 4x divided by x minus y. And that is the original f of x, y. Okay. So if I replace all x's with a constant times x, replace all y's with a constant times y's, I get back the original function. This tells me it's a homogeneous of degree 0. Okay, so that is the first thing I want you guys to uh, notice here. Okay, so when I see a first order differential equation, remember, I'm going to look for the easier methods first. Is it linear? Is it separable? Uh, actually, I would actually ask in the opposite direction. Is it separable? Then I would figure out whether or not it's separable, which of course you'll need algebra skills to recognize that. And then two, you're going to say, okay, it's not separable. Is it linear? That's always normally the second thing I would ask myself. Then I notice, oh, it's not. Uh, it's not actually linear either, okay? Then I start to look for other patterns. One pattern to look for is the homogeneous of degree zero. This means when I uh, replace all x's and y's with a constant times x and a constant times y respectively, it all simplifies and gives me back the original function, okay? Now, here's another way you can notice that something is going to be linear. Uh, another way to notice this uh, you have a rational function where the degree of each term is the same. Now the degree of each term is, when you look at the sum of all the powers of the variables of the term, the, the sum of the powers is called the degree of the term. Now if you look at the power on this guy, it's y to the power 1. This term has degree 1. This here is 4x to the power 1. This term has degree 1. This term here has uh, x to the power 1. That's degree 1. This term here is y to the power 1. That has degree 1. So every term in the top and the bottom has the same degree. Uh, you can look over here. If you look at this uh, second example here, part b, notice that in the first term, you have 3y squared. This is degree 2 because it's y to the squared. This term here has degree 2 because it's x squared. The bottom term is 2xy. So you have x to the power 1, you have y to the power 1. The sum of the terms is 2. So this term as a term, it is degree 2. So you'll see, realize that each term in the top and bottom is degree 2. 
So that's another way to recognize when something is actually homogeneous. So you see if it's a rational function and the degree of all terms in the numerator and denominator are the same, chances are it's homogeneous. Uh, no, it's actually going to be homogeneous. And you can look at it as a homogeneous, uh, provided that there's no easier way to look at it. So that's just something I wanted to mention, right? So here, you would not actually write this out in the problem, um, but I'm just, I want you to understand what's going through my mind. How am I looking at this? How am I examining it? Um, so that I can recognize what technique I want to use. Okay, so these are two main ways that I would, two main things that I would look out for if I wanted to check if something was homogeneous of degree zero. Uh, either eyeball it and see, okay, if I replace all x's and y's with a constant times x and a constant times y, would it all simplify to the original function? Or are the degree of all the terms the same if it's a rational function? Now, if it's not a rational function, you can't really do that, like this example here, if you have logs and stuff. Um, but in the situation where you have a rational function, you can do this check uh, pretty easily. So that is uh, the first thing. So hopefully that's clear. Are we, are we clear on how to examine this, how to look at it? Are you guys following so far? Okay, all right, great. All right, so that's what goes through your mind to, to identify what kind of problem you're looking at. You always kind of look for separable first. If it's a first order differential equation, you would first check, is it separable? Uh, if not, is it linear? If not, then you'd look for other things. For example, homogeneous is probably going to be the next thing you would look for. Um, it tends to be the, the next easiest one to identify. Uh, and so you can actually do one of these two checks. Okay. Now, once I identified it's homogeneous, now look at what this means. So still, we're not getting to the solution of the problem. I, I just wanted to actually show you some more things to, to look at what's going on here. If I have y prime equals uh, y minus 4x, x minus y. So also note the following. Suppose I have this sort of thing. Notice what I could do here. I can multiply this. Uh, I can actually divide top and bottom by x. So let's say I multiply by 1 over x in the top and the bottom. What this is going to give us then, uh, when, when I multiply out, so this is going to multiply out each term here. This is going to multiply out each term there. Notice what this results in. This results in y over x minus uh, 4 x over x, and this would be x over x minus y over x, right? Now notice what is going to happen with the, where the x was, the x's are gonna cancel, and notice that you'll end up with a one in the position where the x used to be, right? So that's what this, the third bullet point here says. All instances of x will become one. Now you might wonder why that is, and this is why. If something is homogeneous, I'd be able to multiply it by some factor to simplify it in such a way that all the x's are gonna end up canceling themselves out. Furthermore, you'd realize that you can write it in such a way that you would end up with y over x as the variable. So this is going to become v. So now you can note x's is going to become one everywhere. And the y will become v everywhere. Not that it's some sort of equivalence. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying effectively what happens is once you actually start to plug in the substitution, you would plug in a v for the y over x. And it would end up looking like that. So notice in the position where the y used to be, uh, now there are v's. It was y minus 4x and then uh, x minus y. So the y used to be in this position. It also used to be in this position, right? So there was a y here and there was a y here, but they get, got replaced by v's. Notice that in the x position, there used to, there, there, 
is now a one. There was an X in this position that's now replaced by a one. There was an X in this position that's now replaced by a one. So effectively, by doing this substitution, by noticing something is homogeneous and applying this substitution, you end up in a situation where all the X's are replaced by ones and all the Y's are replaced by V's. So at the end of the day, um, we can just shortcut to this. Because this pattern will always, uh, this pattern, as in the guy right here, uh, will always happen. for a homogeneous of degree zero. So because you know this is going to happen, you kind of just skip the steps and jump there, right? It's kind of like how when we had linear, we know that a multiplying through by the integrating factor is going to turn the left side into the product rule. So you kind of, in the very next line, you don't actually show that you multiplied out the left side by the integrating factor. You just automatically write mu times y all prime because you know that's where you were going to end up anyway, right? So this is a situation, there are going to be times where I'm going to realize something is homogeneous and I'm going to immediately jump to this scenario and I want you to understand where that comes from. Everywhere I see Y, replace it with V. Everywhere I see X, replace it with 1. That's what the, the right side of the homogeneous first order differential equation is going to look like. Okay, um, And this is kind of why it can happen. You'll always be able to reformulate your problem so that Y over X is, uh, is your variable. Right? So this guy here, you can think of it as, oh, it's y over x is the variable part, minus 4. And here, this is 1 minus y over x. So you notice the variable part is y over x. Okay? And this will always happen for a homogeneous first order differential equation homogeneous of degree zero. Now, this is something that's going to be a common theme, by the way. We're going to be able to solve very specific instances of differential equations. It's going to be like, OK, we can solve a homogeneous first order differential equation. Your, your differential equations are going to be like uh, what people order at Starbucks. They get very specific, very, you know, it's very specific. So for this specific type of first order differential equation, uh, this pattern will always happen, and we can take advantage of it, okay? So that is uh, what it should look like. So uh, here's what the solution would now look like. So uh, here's what the solution would look like. All right, so I have y prime is equal to y minus 4x over x minus y. Okay. So uh, first thing, again, you're going to note this is homogeneous. Now homogeneous, you're going to notice that that word is going to mean something else when we go to second orders and higher. So first order homogeneous is, is different from all the others. But. So once you notice that, you are going to immediately change your y prime to the substitution. We're going to change this to x times dv dx plus v. And then we're going to change this guy. We're going to replace all the y's with v's and all the x's with 1's. So once you notice it's homogeneous, you can immediately jump to this step, okay? So you're gonna start here, your second line is going to look like that. Okay, now it turns out this will be, now it might not look like it at first, but it will be separable. 
right? It's always going to be separate. Once you're homogeneous, once this pattern actually works out, once you do that substitution, it will become a separable ODE. Okay, so now what we're going to do is separate the variables. How would I do that? Well, let's start by moving the, uh, the Vs to one side. So I subtract V from both sides. Now I'm going to simplify, so I'm going to apply algebra. So I'm going to combine terms, multiply this by one minus V over one minus V. So this is going to become V minus four minus V plus V squared all over one minus V. So I'm just combining the fractions here. Uh, it's gonna be V minus V. So this and that kills each other. And I'm going to be left with V squared minus four over one minus V. And at this point, remember the Ds, the differentials are always to the top and to the right, which means I can think of the left side as the V side. So I'm going to take this DX, I'm going to move it over, right? So I'm going to take the DX, I'm going to move it to the other side. I'm going to take the X, I'm going to move it to the other side. And then I'm going to take all the Vs and I'm going to move them to that side. So now what I end up with is this guy's going to be flipped one minus V over V squared minus four DV is going to be equal to DX divided by X. So now the variables are separated, right? Their X is on one side and V's on the other side. So at this point, I'm going to integrate both sides. So now we know that the integral on this side is going to be ln of absolute value of x plus c. Um, but now we have this guy here, v squared minus 4. So maybe I can have you guys uh, minimize there for a second. Maybe I can have you guys chime in at this point just to kind of uh, remind ourselves how to deal with these guys. How would you actually deal with this situation? Partial fractions, right. It looks like a rational function. Um, you could split it up and do a substitution, but you'd end up having to do partial fractions on part of it. Uh, so you might see that you could split this into one over V squared minus four minus V over V squared minus four. You'd use the partial fraction in the first part and the substitution in the second part, but it's much easier to just go straight into partial fractions. It is a rational function. The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator and the denominator is factorable. So this is one minus V. I'm going to think of this as V minus two times V plus two. Then I'm going to do partial fractions here. So I'm going to want to write this as something over V minus two uh, and something over V plus two. And because these are non-repeated linear factors, we can do the cover up method. So what I do is I go to the original, I cover up the V minus two, and then I plug in what would have made that zero, namely V equals two. So I can plug in V equals two where I ignore that part of the denominator. So I would end up with uh, one minus two over two plus two. And then I cover up the other one, cover up the V plus two, then plug in what would have made that zero. So that would give me, uh, I would plug in V equals minus two everywhere. So then this would give me one, minus a minus two over minus two minus two. And those are the partial fractions. So this would become, this here is minus one over four. This here is a uh, minus because the, the top is going to be positive, one plus two, so it's minus three over four.
And now, of course, when you integrate this, this is going to be minus one fourth ln of v minus two minus three fourths uh, ln of v plus two in absolute values uh, and e equals ln of x plus c. Now remember, we take the constant of integration and move to one side. And that is, that is essentially the solution. Now we just have to do the back substitution, but maybe let's actually clean this up a little bit. Um, multiplying both sides by say minus four. And then moving that three to the top. by using the log rules. Then I can combine the logs here. So this is going to be V minus two uh, times V plus two cubed. And on this side, I can look at this as ln of a constant times the absolute value of X to the minus four. So I'm just rewriting these guys based on log rules. Now I can uh, e both sides to cancel the logs. And now I can replace the V with Y over X. I could clean this up a little bit. Uh, I can multiply this by absolute value of x to the fourth on both sides. One of those factors will go in here and I would end up with y minus x. The other, fa the other cubed factor is gonna go in here and I would end up with uh, x squared y plus two x squared cubed. And there is our answer. Uh, this is a cubed. Okay, um, so that's the process. Any questions on that? So here, um, you see a, a first order differential equation like this. What goes through your mind first? Is it separable? No. Is it linear? No, right? You always think of those two things first. Then you're going to think of other things. Um, there's a, a couple of reasons why you would think that it might be homogeneous. So you check that, you'd realize, hey, this is homogeneous. So what that means, you can immediately replace the y prime with this x dv dx plus v. You can immediately replace all y's with v's and all x's with one. And so we get this new differential equation. This differential equation is going to be separable, right? It might not look it at first, but it will be separable. So bring the V over, combine terms, we end up with ultimately this situation. Once you're in this situation, of course, you've separated the variables. You need to actually integrate both sides to find the solution to the differential equation. Integrating the left side involved using partial fractions. This is something you have to recognize and be able to apply. This is something you learned in Calc 2. So we are beyond that at this point, but eventually you'll get to this as the answer. Once you do that, you can clean it up a little bit, but ultimately you end up replacing the V with the Y over X. This gives you an answer in terms of X's and Y's. And that brings us here. So that's the overall process. Uh, I assume, are there any questions on this? Anything that is, uh, Uh, you're talking about the coefficients. What what I use is something called the cover up method. So it does not always work. Cover up method to find these guys. It does not always work. It works when you have non-repeating linear factors. So that that's not something that's going to work all the time. So if I had like a squared, like an x squared plus two here, I couldn't actually do that. So this is called the cover-up method. 
Um, let's see here. Let me check something else. Trying to find, I don't remember. Okay, I think I found it. So that's a link. I don't know why I gave the picture as well. That's a link. Uh, it was taught at the beginning of this video. So you can see me teaching uh, the cover method to my Calc 2 class if you've never seen it before. Um, I know there are some people who haven't seen it in Calc 2, depending on how your class was run, but it's a shame if you haven't learned it. It, it really saves a lot of time. Um, and I was going through a lot of explanations, but when you're doing the problem on your own, you can really get through uh, certain partial fractions quickly here. But uh, yeah, that's the cover method. Doesn't always work, uh, but you can watch that link and you will, it will bring you to where I taught the method. Okay, but that's overall. Okay, all right, let's actually go through some more examples. Let's wrap up. Uh, okay, so let's do this one. Oops. So at this point, um, I'm going to take a little bit more input from you guys. I kind of show you how the process work. You guys have a screenshot of the situation. So yeah, hopefully we are able to do it now. So here's another differential equation you're going to notice it is not separable. It is not linear. So, now you start to look at something. And again, I notice here that the degree of each term is two. So that indicates to me that it's homogeneous. This is the first thing. So I notice not separable, not linear. However, the degree of each term is two, so I know it's homogeneous. Okay, so I, 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 I got you guys up to there. All right, now what do we do? So the degree is defined as the sum of the terms of each, uh, the sum of the powers of each term. So if you have two x, y, the power here, the power on the x is one, and the power on the y is one. And so uh, the degree is the sum of these two. That's how we talk about the degree of the terms. So when you talk about the degree of a multivariable function, you're talking about the sum of the terms. With single variable, the degree is always just going to be the power that's there. But for multivariable, for each term, you have to find the sum of the powers. That's how you find the degree of a term for a multivariable polynomial. Okay. Now, all right. So I see Roberto is like, okay, if you multiply and divide both, divide top and bottom by x squared, you will be able to get it into a nice form. Yes. But again, remember, we can actually skip that situation. Right. Remember, we were we were worried about uh, running out of time on the quiz earlier, so we don't want to be efficient. Once you realize this is homogeneous, you know how this is going to end up. Right. You're going to replace all Y's with V's and all X's with ones. Right. Don't waste your time trying to algebraically figure out how to write it in terms of Y over X. That's not going to that's that's it's a waste of time. Right. And then on the other side, you're just going to write out the product rule. 
So it's going to be V times X all prime, which you run out by the product rule. So it's going to be X times the, the V DX plus V, right? So once you realize it's homogeneous, that is the next line. All right, now this will always be separable. Uh, how do I separate this? What do I do first? Right, move the V. Yeah, same idea as last time. Move the V to this side. Then you're going to combine terms. So I'm gonna combine the fraction. I can create a common denominator by multiplying by two V over two V. And that's going to allow me to write this as one big fraction divided by two V. So it's gonna be three V squared minus V minus two V squared. This is going to end up being a uh, minus, that should be a minus one. 3v squared minus 1 minus 2v squared. So this is end up going to be v squared minus 1 over 2v. And on this side, I'm going to have x dv dx. And then I'm going to move the v's to this side. So multiply by the reciprocal. Then move the x's to that side, which is going to be dx over x. At this point, I'm going to integrate both sides. The left side, of course, that one is easy. This is ln of x plus c, which by the way, we can always write this as ln of a constant times x. Uh, so I did that in the last problem, but I didn't really explain where that came from. But the idea is if you have ln of x plus, plus c, you can think of this as ln of x plus ln of c. In other words, any constant you can write as ln of some constant, right? The log function has the range all real numbers, right? So any real number you have, it's possible to write it as the logarithm of that num of some other number, right? So you can write that, and then by the log rules, you can actually combine this, right? Log of something plus log of something else is log of the problem, right? So you can even think of this as um, ln of c times absolute value of x, right? And I, I used this guy up here earlier. Um, I applied it here. So just so you're aware, that's where that came from. What about the, uh, the left side? How do I integrate the left side? Right, substitution. So you, you just do u equals v squared minus one. Your du is going to be two v, uh, da, da, da. and of course, uh, that ends up being ln of the absolute value of v squared minus one. So this means that your ln of v squared minus one is equal to this. And of course, you always think of the plus c being on the right side. So now you can actually drop both uh, l, you can drop both LNs. So you have V squared minus one is equal to a constant times absolute value of X. And then you replace the V with Y over X. Something that we'd like to do to kind of uh, avoid fractions can multiply both sides by the absolute value of X squared. So that multiplies in and kills the fraction. Um, and of course, the keep this as an equation, you have to do it to the other side. So this would look like y squared minus x squared. And then it would look like c x cubed. And that is the solution, the general solution to this differential equation.
All right, here is another one. All right, so you have this one here. So you think, look at that and you think, is it separable? No, right, because uh, to actually separate the y's, you have in parentheses here a function of x and a function of y. If you distribute, uh, you're going to have a y attached to an x in one part and then a function purely of y on the other part. You're not gonna be able to move that across with multiplication or division. Um, obviously here, your y is also zero greater than zero, because we have ln of the y here. Um, so it's not separable. You also notice it's not linear. How do you know it's not linear? Because of the ln, uh, be specific, there are two lns the ln of y. So that is the part that makes it not linear. Um, also, when you multiply out to have the y times another function of y would also make it not linear, right? It's not, it's not going to be a linear function. However, you can realize that you can write this as a function of y over x, which makes it homogeneous. You can actually plug in. So here I can divide both sides by x. So you have that guy. Now notice here, this is homogeneous of degree zero. How do we know? Well, if I replace y with k times y and x with k times x, the k's just cancel. Same thing here, replace x with k times x, replace y with k times y, the k's cancel. So this is actually homogeneous of degree zero which means I can immediately jump to a certain line. This means um, my y prime, I can think of it as x dv dx plus v. Everywhere I see y, replace it with v. Everywhere I see x, replace it with one. So I have that. I can then separate the variables. This normally starts by multiplying, uh, subtracting v from both sides and then uh, sort of combining terms. Now, by the way, uh, ln of one over V, I can think of that as minus V, ln V. So then I can separate the variables by bringing that underneath. So let's leave the negative on that side. So let's say here I have negative dx d over x. And then over here, I would have 1 over v ln v minus v dv. So now I can integrate both sides. Now, of course, on the, uh, on the right side, this is just minus ln of x plus c. And this plus c includes the plus c from the left side. I can rewrite this as ln of c absolute value x to the minus one by moving up this minus one to the power. Okay, so that's the right side. All right, you guys, left side. How do you integrate the left side? Uh, yes, this is a plus v here. I, I left the negative side sign over there. All right, and how do I integrate that one? Okay, now it's not partial fractions. Uh, partial fractions, remember, only works on rational functions. Uh, one over v ln v plus v is not a rational function because it has a log in it. 
partial fractions only works when you have a ratio of polynomials. So partial fractions would not be how we do that. Other suggestions? Insha, how did you get uh, that that answer? Remember, one over something doesn't. Remember, one over something isn't automatically a len of the thing, right? That was mentioned in the syllabus even. So that's because you have one over something. The integral is not necessarily ln of that thing. Okay, so you have a common factor V. What do you do with it? Right, substitution now, right? So you, you would go with the u equals u equals the ln v plus one. Your du is going to be that one over v dv. Right, so you have this here becomes your du, and then you just have one over u. So that is going to give you ultimately ln of ln v plus one on this side. And then you can actually, uh, e both sides, you get ln of v plus one equals c x to the minus one, and then you replace everyone. So ln of y over x plus one equals cx to one inverse. And there we go. Okay, moral of the story, you have to remember your integration techniques. Like I said, Calc 2 is gonna be very important. Not only does this class feel a lot like Calc 2, just, just kind of like the vibe it gives off, but you're, you actually need to remember a lot of your Calc 2. Like that's going to be the main, uh, if you're having trouble with this class, then your main skills deficit is going to be in the Calculus 2 realm, just so you know. Algebra is going to be a close second because, of course, you have to be able to visually see that you can manipulate a function to get a certain form uh, to know that you're within the realm of a certain method. So that takes algebra skills. But then to, the skills to actually execute going through a problem, getting to the solution, it's, it's going to be the skills that you learned in Calc 2. So that's a substitution equation right there, substitution integral. All right, let's... Uh, so got the last one. So this is not homogeneous. This is just, I mentioned that homogeneous is a very specific instance of a much larger uh, problem strategy. Uh, and so this is not homogeneous. It's just, it's just a not homogeneous. But it is a problem where we'd use substitution. Now it turns out for differential equations every now and then, you can kind of like with integration, you can do a substitution. You can make a substitution that causes your differential equation to become easier. Now in the situation where your function is a homogeneous function, this particular substitution V equals Y over X is convenient, right? However, this, this is not limit, this idea is, this strategy is not limited only to homogeneous first order uh, ODEs. You can apply substitution in a more general way. And here's a problem, right? So dy dx equals four x minus y plus one all squared. Um, so I'm not really going to uh, tell you guys exactly what to do. Why don't you kind of follow your nose, try to tell me how you would get through this one? I mean, I gave you the hint. 
uh, to try a substitution. So I, how do you think this will play out? You know, someone can go through this and uh, after this we'll wrap up the class. So some people think that your dy dx will end up being xd xdv plus v. Why is that? Or xdv dx plus v. Why would that be the case? I mean, here if we set if we set v equals four x minus y plus one, how how would we find dy dx? Right, remember dy dx became this, not because for a substitution it always becomes that. This is a very specific scenario, right? This is the scenario when v is y over x, which means your y is v times x. So if I wanna find dy dx, I differentiate that equation, and then the derivative of the right side is with the product rule, and that causes me to get this expression. Right? It's not because every time you're doing a substitution, that's the expression. It's just that if you're looking at a homogeneous first order differential equation, that's always going to be the expression. But here, it's, it's not a general rule. Using this substitution, what would dy dx be? Okay, so someone suggests solving for y first. Okay, doable. So move y to that side, then I have 4x minus v plus 1 on that side, then. Then differentiate. So on this side, you get dy dx. On that side, you get 4 minus dv dx. So in this scenario, in this, for this substitution, that's what I would replace my dy dx with. So then I go to this, this uh, differential equation and I'm going to write four minus dv dx equals, well, this is now v squared. So this is our new differential equation. After our substitution, that's what this guy becomes. How do I solve that differential equation? Move the four to the other side. And then. Okay, you multiply both sides by a negative. And then. All right, what would the separable parts look like? Move the V to the left and find, yes, Eugene, it's separable. <laughs> or you again. 
Right, you'd have to divide by the four minus V. So this becomes DV over four minus V squared equals DX. And then we are going to integrate both of these. All right, how do I integrate the left side? partial fractions. So here, this is dv over 2 minus v times 2 plus v. As soon as I can look at this as 2 minus v, 2 plus v. In fact, this is it's kind of weird to look at it like that. Um, for psychological reasons. Um, what we can do is just uh, take a negative to both sides minus dx. And so I can think of this guy as v minus two times v plus two, right? Not that the other way was wrong. It's just, it's, it's kind of weird to think about it in that order because we're used to thinking about things in the other way. So now I can think of this as v minus two v plus 2. Then I use the cover-up method. So go to the original, cover up v minus 2, and plug in 2. I would get a quarter. Uh, go to the original, cover up v plus 2, plug in uh, minus 2 for v. I get minus a quarter. And so those are the partial fractions. And so now I would have 1 quarter times ln of v minus 2 uh, minus ln of v plus 2 equals minus x plus c. Um, I can multiply both sides by four and combine the logarithms. This is v minus two over v plus two equals minus four x plus c. This will give me v minus two over v plus two is equal to c e to the minus four x. And now I can do my back substitution. My v was actually uh, 4x minus y plus 1. So since since v equals that, I can now plug those guys in. This means that 4x minus y minus 1 divided by 4x minus y plus 3 is equal to CE to the minus 4x. Now, I could actually solve this for y. That's going to be a little bit annoying, though. Just cross multiply, multiply out, gather like terms of, gather the terms that contain y to one side, and then divide by the uh, coefficient. And you, you could actually solve for this in terms of x if you wanted to. Um, though it would, it would be kind of annoying. But that is how you can get to that solution. So this is an implicit, uh, implicit general solution. Right? So that's how a substitution method would work in general. Right? So uh, you do a substitution that is hopefully convenient so that when you actually differentiate that substitution, plug it into the original ODE, the ODE becomes nicer and easier to deal with. In, in all cases that we've done in this class, it's separable. Um, but this is a very important problem type. And this box, it's very important for you to remember this box. Homogeneous first order, different, homogeneous first order differential equations are another class of function that you're going to, another class of ODEs that you're going to want to know how to solve. So given a bunch of random ODEs, you have to be able to identify what type of ODE you're looking at and then apply uh, an appropriate method to solve that ODE. And this is now a new type. And that's all the time we have for today. We're going to wrap up there. And in tomorrow's class, we're going to look at some applications. We're going to look at modeling with first order ODEs. And we're going to see the first order linear ODEs come back 
and we're going to do a bunch of word problems. So next class is going to be, should be fun. That being said, that's all we have for today. Remember, reach me there. Uh, if you email me, we can set something up. Um, but for now, uh, we will wrap up there. Oh, yes, you have a question? Uh, it's about the homework set for chapter 2.1, problem 16. Okay. What, 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 uh, what about it? Uh, yeah, it's just last stuff. Oh, um, within the web work, there should be an email instructor button or oh, something like that. Yeah. So, so, so if you have a problem, uh, if you have a problem with a specific question, because web work um, um, modifies the question for each student, it changes all the numbers and things of that sort. So if you have a problem uh, with something in web work, it's best that if I can see your specific problem. And so there is an email instructor button, you click that and yeah. I can see there. It'll link me to the problem that you have. And then you can type your question there. So if, if that's the case, that's how you want to deal with uh, web work homework questions. Thank you. Uh, as for the, the scans that you guys may have emailed me today, uh, I haven't checked. Like I'm, I started class as soon as the quiz ended, so I, I haven't checked my email just now. But I'll check it. and. Uh, We'll see if you got it. Anyway, we're going to wrap up there. I will see you guys in the next one. Have fun and stay safe.